Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested.com. Over the past couple of years, we've seen a lot of computer vision technologies get both more powerful and also miniaturize everything from Microsoft's Kinect sensor all the way to smartphones using Google's Project Tango. And these technologies allow you to digitize real world environments, experience on your web browser or even in virtual reality systems. Today we're at the Exploratorium Museum in San Francisco and we're getting special access to their workshop space where they build amazing science exhibits and we're gonna scan that space using the Matterport 3D scanner and chat with its founder to learn how they work and also show you the scanning process. Come on. Hi, great to, Good meet, to you. meet you. So this is Matt Bell, you're the founder mm -hmm. of Matterport, and you guys mm -hmm. make an interesting technology for room scanning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so tell me about the Matterport camera and how this sure. whole thing came about. So this camera lets you very quickly build 3D models of any space. We were inspired about five years ago by the idea that we could create the equivalent of photography in 3D and bridge the physical and digital worlds by letting you quickly take a camera through a space and end up with a photorealistic, fully dimensionally accurate 3D model of that space. Yeah, I remember you know, years ago, I would just put mm -hmm. a camera on a tripod, take a ton of pictures, yeah. and you can create a 360 panorama, yeah. but that's not exactly what you're doing here. There's more dimensionality to the technology. Exactly, yeah. It's, you know, it's 3D like a video game as opposed to 3D like the glasses that you put on. And so you can navigate that space, really explore it, get a sense of being there firsthand. You mentioned like a video game, mm -hmm. and video game technologies like yeah. Microsoft Connect, they kind of mm -hmm. help bring forth yeah. those computer vision systems mm -hmm. that make things like this yeah. possible. Um, how is this similar or different to that kind of technology? Sure, yeah, so the fundamental hardware for 3D reconstruction um, is called structured light. And what it does is it projects a random dot pattern in infrared and then views it from a different angle. And by seeing the distortions in that invisible dot pattern, the system can determine distance to each pixel on the image. Oh, interesting. And so if you pair that with a color camera, what you get back from each capture is like a 3D jigsaw puzzle piece. And so what our camera does is it captures and then stitches together all these jigsaw puzzle pieces, like thousands of them, to assemble this like complete model of the space. Right. If I manually took hundreds of photos and ran it mm -hmm. through like a photogrammetry software, for mm -hmm. example, that's a very yeah. computationally intensive process. Yeah, and Could, it's the photogrammetry like isn't quite at the point where you can just take it out and capture anything with it. Um, being able to work from raw 3D data and have particularly good algorithms that we've developed to do the stitching. It lets you have reliably good results and it lets you do it in real time. So you're taking additional yeah. depth data. Exactly. And because you're in control of the camera, you made the camera, yeah. you know exactly where the lenses are, where, where every mm -hmm. camera is pointing at. Yeah. All the information then builds into your algorithm. And um, so you get- Yeah, the, we do take advantage of that information, but we also give you the freedom to just move the camera anywhere as you're capturing. Uh. So you don't have to be careful at all. You simply, move the camera from spot to spot. So if you were capturing like a room in a typical house, you'd maybe put the camera in like three or four spots in the room. It takes around 30 seconds to spin around each time. And so you're done with that whole room in just a couple of minutes. And Much then you can 30 move seconds. from spot to spot. Yeah, it's really fast. Well, I'd love to get a demo of this. All can right. we run this camera? And, yeah, and, let's and do see it. what happens? So we use an iPad as a remote control. And so this way, if you want to capture a space, here, let's uh, get out of the view of the camera. You just hit scan, mm -hmm. and it starts spinning. Now, we'll obviously want to stay out of the camera's view while it's capturing, so we'll just walk around. And, and in, this, cam in this, yeah. uh, this camera itself, it's not mm -hmm. just one camera sensor and one lens. What is the setup? You guys That's have? correct. So it's um, three depth sensors and three color sensors, so it's getting a really broad field of view up and down of the entire space. Mm. And obviously you want as little motion as possible. It's better mm -hmm. for these static spaces. Yeah. Um, and then what kind of information mm -hmm. is that being sent to the iPad or being processed right now? Yeah, so it's capturing around 10 million 3D points per second. 
and it's madly stitching all of those together as it turns around. Once it has that full 360 degree plus depth image, mm -hmm. you know, that, that puzzle piece, it sends that over to the iPad. And as the iPad receives puzzle piece after puzzle piece, as you move this camera around from spot to spot, you'll see the stitching happen on the iPad. And it's a like quick and dirty preview, um, enough that you know that everything's aligned properly and you've captured the whole space. Once you're done capturing that space, you upload it, and then we use the resources of the cloud right. to make a high quality final result. And is that high quality final result, the data wise, mm -hmm. is it similar to like a point cloud with um, textures on top? It's, so it's a textured mesh with mm -hmm. high resolution imagery built in as well. So um, here, by the way, the first capture just showed up. And so you can see it's captured the area right around where we place the camera. Now you'll right. see some dark areas those are areas that have been occluded, right? So the area behind this table, for example, is not visible. So you'll then just pick a new spot to move the camera to, maybe 10 feet away or so. And as you do that, this, this image will fill in until you have a complete map of the space. Wow. And obviously, you know, once you get a really good sense mm -hmm. of um, a mapping of the room and mm -hmm. you're able to then experience it. And so yeah. the, with Matterport, you guys are letting people view it in mm -hmm. browsers, even yeah. in you know, Gear VR, Gear VR. Yeah. Uh, with basically the 360 mm -hmm. environments. The way mm -hmm. you view these, it's kind of, they're point-based or node-based. You're mm -hmm. clicking on different nodes. Yeah, you and move then from spot to spot. Yeah. You, you look around in 360, mm -hmm. um, but it's not just a panorama. Like mm -hmm. You can actually see four of their planes. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Here, let's... Uh, Switch over to a view of a finished space. Yep. So this is something fun. There's a group of people who are making a Star Trek fan movie oh, okay. um, in, in the style of the original series. And yeah. so they've, they've recreated the set from the original series. And so you can, for example, jump in. Here's the, the teleporter room. And I can go get beamed up. Right, and at each of these nodes, you can configure mm -hmm. different actions where the other nodes are, mm -hmm. whether information panels come up, on-screen overlays. Yeah, that's so all of the alignment to put this together is done automatically. Mm -hmm. And then very soon, we're releasing a feature that lets you layer all that additional functionality on. So you can create a rich experience inside this um, this replica of a physical space. You know, I might look at this and it kind of evokes like Google Street View, where they mm -hmm. have their cars drive around, they're yeah. scanning, and you have the nodes, but something like Google Street View is an option, offers the option to jump out and see a model. Right. Yeah, because this is natively 3D, there are a lot of great things we can do. Everything from having a seamless visual transition to being able to view the entire space at once. You can even jump to a floor plan view and get the the classic uh, direct on top overlay of everything. Wow, is there any opportunity in the future to possibly have it, you able to move through these spaces in real time? Yes, so the ability to move freely yeah. is something that we already have. Ah. Um, you get it at slightly lower visual quality. Mm. And for about 80% of our customers, they prefer photorealism plus moving from spot to spot. Right. But you can actually get that free movement. And a lot of customers, especially in construction and other industries where they want to be able to take measurements, they can then wander around the space, click on a couple of points, get a, a measurement off of that. And so it, it also has value as an export asset. So for example, if you're making a movie or a video game level, you can grab that 3D data bring it into a tool like Maya or 3ds Max, and then use that as a stencil for creating content. You mentioned construction, you mentioned video yeah. game design. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a lot of opportunities to use yeah. technologies like this, like mapping. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously real estate, which is mm -hmm. a big customer base for yeah. you guys. Um, what are some of the other markets and industries that, yeah. that could so use, it's, make use of this? It's a really general purpose medium, you know, in the same way that photography is a medium. So you think about anyone who needs to capture a space for any reason. So you have real estate, rentals, hotels, uh, retail, um, any sort of like infrastructure around, say, facilities management, construction, home improvement. But then there's also this ability to 
let you be any place at any time, right? right. So you know, people have been capturing 3D models of travel destinations and hidden places that mm -hmm. are otherwise difficult to visit. And so there's a lot of content that's either educational or just plain interesting that, that our technology has been able to bring online. And obviously, the virtual reality, a huge thing for yeah. us and our, and our audience, and people are excited mm -hmm. to explore spaces, both in mm -hmm. kind of 360 experiences, but also yeah. real-time mm -hmm. room-scale experiences. Is yeah. that something you guys are also looking forward to? Yeah, so we had one of the, the first apps on the Gear VR App Store, and the user experience there has been fantastic. I mean, once you put on the VR goggles, as you know, mm -hmm. you are literally immersed in the space, and you, you get that visceral sense of being there. And we've had customers that have been using Matterport as part of their um, regular business, right? So for example, the letting clients preview real estate quickly mm -hmm. or um, you know, putting travel destinations online that people can check out via VR. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty exciting world that we're getting into with VR. Well, this is also a pretty exciting space as well, mm -hmm. and we're yeah. excited for the opportunity to use Matterport to scan this mm -hmm. workshop at Exploratorium, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. hopefully we'll show people what that experience is like. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you so much, Matt, for sharing with Sounds us the technology. Indeed. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you. Good to meet you as well.